Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the world of home automation with me, your host, Paul Hibbert. Today I've done an epically long tutorial, so I apologize in advance for its length. It's quite a complicated subject, so I'm afraid it had to be that way. Um, I've taken what I did in my last video, which was a demonstration of uh, how you could use Alexa as a home alarm system using If This Then That, uh, and I've turned it into a three-parter. Uh, this is part one. This video is how to enable the alarm. Part two will be how to use the alarm to scare the burglars away when motion is detected. And part three will be how to disable the alarm when you come home using either your voice or using an NFC tag. And uh, now before we get started, I'd like to give a quick shout out to anyone who's donated money to me via my PayPal. I can't thank you enough. It is the sweetest gesture I can possibly imagine and it really does keep me going. Um, the second shout out is to the German guy who is copying all of my videos. Stop copying my videos, you douche. Um, honestly, I don't care. If he wants to copy my videos, that's that's sincerely flattering. Um, try and copy this one. So this is a fairly lengthy tutorial. I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you next time. So we're going to learn how to do this in stages. Stage one being the enabling of the alarm. The end result of stage one should be that we have a tablet set to watch for motion and we have all the lights in the premises switched off. So we're basically creating an away mode for the house. We're going to achieve this using a Broadlink RM Pro and a mobile phone or tablets, any Android device really, and if this then that. So in the if this then that cloud, we're gonna create a recipe for the maker channel, which will send a HTTP request to switch the lights off, and one for the many thing channel, which will switch the tablet from standby to waiting for motion. We're going to achieve that using Alexa by creating two identical if statements that say, if I say trigger lockdown, then perform the following commands. So on the device I intend to use as my camera, I've downloaded the ManyThing app and I'm now going to sign up for an account with ManyThing. Simple as that, I'm now signed up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to camera. And you can see my uh, ManyThing app has now started into camera mode and I can simply press record if I want to start recording motion. I'm going to go into settings. And you can see I've already got recording mode set to record on motion. Here I can choose things like sensitivity. So if the camera was triggering um, too often, I could lower the sensitivity. I can enable record on sound if I want the camera to start recording on sound. So send push notifications is obviously a useful thing to have. What that's going to do is it's going to send a notification to any ManyThing installation, which means if I've installed ManyThing on my mobile phone, I'm going to receive a notification when my camera sees movement. I can also do the same thing with email by so clicking this button. Um, I don't want both. And so if I go back, that is the ManyThing device set up ready. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to sign up for an if this then that account by going to ift.com and going to sign up. Sign up. And then we can start creating applets. So um, you can get recipes from here that are already made. Uh, we're going to create a new applet though by going to my applets and then new applet. And we want to choose from the plus if this. And we want Alexa. And now I have to connect our Amazon account by signing in. And this means we can now control Alexa using if this then that. Simple as that, very easy. Uh, and we're going to find the option for say a specific phrase. And we're going to put in here, lock down in lowercase letters. And this means when we say Alexa trigger lockdown, she's going to do whatever we put in the that. So if Alexa is trigger lockdown, then do this. And we want to search for many thing. And click on many thing. We're going to connect our many thing account because it's not connected yet. So I'm going to put in the same details I signed up with. And then we're going to allow access to if. And then we can choose our actions. So we're going to choose set multiple camera settings. There are lots of things here to choose from, uh, but this is the one that's going to make sure it's doing what we want it to do. So this is my Samsung Galaxy that I set it up on. 
Uh, I want the recording to start. Uh, we'll leave the audio muted. Uh, we're going to go with video mode. Don't need to worry about time interval. And motion sensitivity threshold, I'm going to set to 5. So all nice self-explanatory stuff. And if I hit finish, then I should be taken back to my applets where I can see I've got one applet, which is if you say Alexa trigger lockdown, then set multiple camera settings on the device Samsung Galaxy 935F. That is IFT set up to set our camera to monitoring motion. And we're all done with this section. So it's worth mentioning that the devices in this diagram could actually be one and the same thing. They don't have to be separate devices. I have in this diagram created them as two separate devices to make it easier to understand. But in real life, I've actually configured my tablet that's got the camera on it to be exactly the same tablet that I'm using to control my lights via the RM Pro. So this is my Android device, which is permanently switched on. It acts as the go-between between, between Alexa and the RM Pro so that I can speak to my lights or speak to my TV. It also today is going to act as the go-between between, between the outside world and the RM Pro so that we can send HTTP requests to it to switch my lights off. For those of you not familiar with the RM Pro, you're going to want to see this video here. Um, this video will give you all the information you need about how to set the RM Pro up in the first place. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to control the RM Pro using a HTTP request from if this then that. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is open up the RM plugin, which you can get from the Play Store. Um, again, you'll have to have already set this up so that the RM plugin can control your devices. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to switch on the option HTTP bridge. We're going to enable the HTTP bridge. We're going to leave the port number as it is. 9876 is fine. We're going to auto start on boot, so even if our tablet restarts, it's still going to be enabled. We're going to enable basic authentication, so the nasty men on the internet can't control our lights, because that would be bad. Uh, so we're going to choose a username, root is fine. Alpine for this demonstration is fine. You're going to want to use something other than Alpine, though, in your home setup. So just before we go any further, you need to take note here of the port number, 9876. You need to take note of your username and password that we've just created. And you need to take note of the IP address here under documentation 192.168. whatever your IP address is. This is the IP address of this device that we're configuring, and you're going to need it again shortly in this guide. So if we then come back out and go to code list uh, and scroll through for the devices that you're wanting to switch off, in my case, it's the music room. So I've already configured the RM plugin so that it can control the music room to switch everything off. So all I need to know is the ID, uh, which in this case is 96, um, because we're going to put that ID in a moment into our if this then that recipe. So if you're not familiar with port forwarding already, this bit's a little bit awkward. Basically, we need to be able to tell our router that if a request comes in from the outside world, i.e. on the internet, for HTTP, to send it to our device that we've just configured to receive the HTTP request. After all, how does your router know not to just send it to your desktop machine? So we have to configure a rule specifically on our router to say that if something comes through on this port for this IP address, it needs to go to this internal IP. To configure my router accordingly, all I need to do is access the router from any PC on the network. It's easiest to do on a desktop machine. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to here, I'm going to type in cmd to load up my command prompt, and I'm going to type in ipconfig. Um, and all I'm doing is I'm asking my computer here that I'm working on, what is the default gateway? What is the IP address of my router? And that's because I want to visit my router. And it has responded to say your router is at 192.168.0.1. That's my default gateway. And all I do is I open up any browser and try to visit 192.168.0.1. And I should get the login page for my router. So this is my Virgin Superhub. If you have a different router from me, you'll be getting a different page right now. And I don't know what your username and password will be, but it will probably be written on the bottom of your router. Mine, I know what it is already. I don't need to look at the bottom of my router. I'm going to sign into my router and go to advanced settings. You'll have slightly different screens if you don't have a Virgin router, um, but the principles are exactly the same regardless of which router you've got. I'm going to go to port forwarding. 
And I'm going to add a rule in here so that my router knows any traffic coming in for HTTP requests on port 9876 needs to be sent to my tablet or my Android device that I've been setting up to receive the HTTP requests to act as the bridge between uh, the outside world and my RM Pro. So I'm going to leave the service as it is. I'm going to call it HTTP Lights. And this is my rule for sending all traffic to my RM Pro to switch my lights on and off. Starting and ending ports are both 9876 because that's what we set in the HTTP section of our RM plugin. I'm going to choose the IP address of my RM plugin because that's where I want the request to go to. And I click add rule and then apply. You can see it's added the rule at the bottom. And now I'm going to press apply. And yes. And that's port forwarding set up on my router. Okay, so for our final piece of the puzzle, we're going to go back to ift.com. We're going to sign in uh, using the same details as before. And we're going to go to my applets, at which point you'll find the one that you created earlier, which is Alexa triggers lockdown, which switches switches the camera to motion. I'm going to create a new applet which has the same trigger. So we're going to go find the Alexa skill and we're going to go to say a specific phrase and call it lockdown like we did before. Uh, and this time instead of selecting the many thing recipe, we're going to select the maker recipe. So the maker recipe is something that's been created by IFT to allow you to send HTTP requests. So I'm going to choose the only option we have, which is make a web request. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky. The URL for me, because I have a static IP address, will be whatever my ISP has given me. So if I go to whatismyip.com, I can find out very easily that that is the address of my router on the internet. So anyone trying to get to my router from the internet can go to that address. If you don't have a static IP address, which some internet service providers don't provide, then your IP address will keep changing and your router's location will keep changing on the internet and all of this will break. If you have a non-static IP address, if you have a dynamic IP address from your ISP, you'll need to create an account with a company called Dynu who will be able to provide you a static address which will be alpha rather than numeric um, and you'll be able to put that here in place of the IP address. So we need to start this with HTTP colon double slash because it's a HTTP request. We also need to provide our username and password, which was root and then a colon and then alpine. And then an at symbol to say that we are connecting on this username, this password at this address, which is Paul's router. Uh, this will be obviously your router instead. Uh, and then another colon and then 9876. 9876 being the port number. So we're saying we want to come in with this username, this password to this router on this port number. My router knows because we've created the port forward that anything coming on in on this port number is to be sent to the Broadlink RM Pro. Finally, we need to tell it what command to send to the RM Pro. So we need to now visit the RM Pro itself to find out what that URL should be. So if we visit 192.168.0.7, on port 9876. I should get asked for a username and password because the broad link is secure. And we need to put in again, root and alpine. And this gives you some configura configuration information for the broad link RM Pro. And what we're after is the nice easy example at the top here. I say nice easy, doesn't look that nice. Um, and then we just paste that into our applets after the forward slash. So the top example from the RM Pro just needs to go into the end after a forward slash. The final thing to change is this uh, example ID we need to replace with the ID that we actually want to control, which in my case was the music room. In your case, it will be whatever device you've decided you want to switch off or on or whatever it is you're sending a HTTP request for. Finally, I'm going to switch it to post. I'm going to set the content type to text forward slash plane, and I'm going to click create action. Now, what I did notice was when I tried to do this in uh, Chrome a moment ago, I didn't get the 
um, ability to actually give it a title, which was ridiculous because it then wouldn't let me continue. Uh, if you're having that problem, try using Internet Explorer instead. Um, so I can call it whatever I want. It's saying if you say Alexa trigger lockdown, then make a web request. I could change this to be then make a web request to the RM Pro to turn the lights off. Hit finish. And there we have it. So if I now go back to my applets, I've got two um, Alexa skills. One that says, if I say Alexa trigger lockdown, then make a web request to switch the lights off. And another that says, if I say Alexa trigger lockdown, then change the camera settings to uh, recording motion. Um, and the many thing app will do the rest. It will send me notifications if anybody is uh, detected as making motion in the room. Well, that's it for this guide. This one's gone on far too long as it is. I'll see you next time for the next guide where I'll be showing you how you can get Alexa to scare the burglars when motion is detected. Uh, and then there'll be a further guide after that to show you how you can disable the alarm when you come home. I hope you've enjoyed this one and please remember to like and subscribe. It means the world to me. It really does. Uh, and I shall see you next time. <laughs>